guess either way to be, to be honest at this time. Again, as I say, we're, we're in the early stages of the investigation to try and locate Teresa. But, but again, would urge you to contact either the police or husband or a family. Just to let her know, let us know if she's safe and well. Detectives from the Harbour Police at Rotterdam are taking the lead on the investigation, but it is not thought that anyone else is involved or that a criminal offence has taken place. Jeff Manskill, BBC East Midlands today. A man has appeared in court charged with the illegal possession of military ammunition and equipment. Army bullets and CS gas are said to have been among the items recovered from Nottinghamshire man Darren Moss. With more details, here's Simon Hare. Darren Moss leaves Mansfield Magistrates Court. He faces seven charges, all relating to the illegal possession or purchase of military ammunition and a personal army radio. The court heard that the charges relate to 30 rounds of ammunition, which is said to have included bullets, shotgun cartridges, trip flares and CS gas pellets, which can explode if lit. Mr Moss, who's 33 and from Tudor Street in Sutton in Ashfield, didn't enter any pleas to the charges. And because the case is considered so serious, the magistrates have decided to send it to the Higher Crown Court in Nottingham. He'll next appear there in April. Simon Hare, BBC East Midlands Today, Mansfield Magistrates Court. Detectives are still waiting to question a 71-year-old man arrested on suspicion of murder. 70-year-old Julia Thurgoland, who was a church warden, was found dead at a farmhouse at Maplebeck in Nottinghamshire on Friday. The man, who was also found injured at the property, was taken to hospital. The police have now completed their inquiries at the house and the cordon has been lifted. East Midlands Ambulance Service are preparing for one of their busiest nights of the year. Last New Year, they had nearly 3,500 calls. Now, staff are pleading with people out celebrating tonight to watch how much they drink. Carol Hines reports. New Year's Eve marks the end of more than a fortnight of seasonal celebrations, which puts more demand on ambulances than at any other time of the year. On the Friday before Christmas, we saw 500 more calls than normal, and that trend has continued through Christmas into Boxing Day and this week. So Boxing Day again is an extremely busy day with probably 400 calls more than normal. I think tonight we'll probably see uh, anything up to a thousand more calls than normal. It'll be a very busy evening. Last New Year was the busiest day of 2011. They handled nearly three and a half thousand calls between midnight and four o'clock in the morning. Staff say there are simple steps people can take to keep themselves safe. Please have something to eat before you go out, so that when you start drinking you've got something in your stomach. Uh, drink sensibly. Have lots of uh, soft drinks and water if you can between the alcoholic drinks. As they brace themselves for another busy night, the ambulance service is urging revellers not to become a statistic by letting alcohol or drugs ruin their night. Carol Hines, BBC East Midlands Today. Next, an online museum has been created to mark a hundred years since the Leicester Infirmary was granted permission to use the name Royal in its title. Our health correspondent Rob Sissons has this report. An iron lung and medical relic from this hospital's long and colourful past. And this painting shows the original Leicester Infirmary, which opened nearly 250 years ago back in 1771. There were no photographs, of course, back then, but plenty have been amassed since and are now being put on the hospital's website, a virtual museum. This retired doctor looks after the collection and is always on the lookout for new things. And if anyone has got anything which involves the history of an infirmary, whether it be 1950s or even better still, going back to the 1870s or 80s, we would be interested. And the online museum is to mark a hundred years since the hospital was granted permission to use the name Royal in its title. History is all around here. It goes right back beyond even the start of the infirmary in 1771. It was a, a site for rest for pilgrims and people coming into Leicester City, well, the town as it was. The collection can be viewed on the Leicester Hospital's NHS website. Rob Sisson's BC East Midlands Today, Leicester. Work to reopen one of Leicestershire's last independent cinemas is well underway. The Regal in Melton Mowbray closed last year after it went to...